stage select. The stage select position is going to be down here. So it's it should be down far enough and also far enough to the right, which is past the um, halfway point. Um, the stage active font have it made. Stage active two font is what happens after um, it's selected. Well, yeah, and then the stage done font is like um, well, no, this is the active font. Now, um, I guess this is um, more useful if you had made a screen pack where you could have a preview of the stage or you could like I don't know it was like scrollable or something um, for some reason uh, Mugen doesn't actually allow you to make previews of the stage you have to do a whole lot of um you have to do some serious workarounds and secondly you have to do it for every single stage you add now the stage done font, same, I haven't done it yet, I haven't made it yet. Okay, the team menu. This part's slightly more complicated than what's above. Um, the best way for me to show you what a team menu should look like is to open a unedited Mugen. It's easiest to see this when you're going to watch. Okay, so the this section is basically about teams. So you have the word team mode and then you have the word for single, simultaneous, and turns, and you also have the little um sprite for it or images, and then you have an animated arrow. And if you notice there are two fonts, possibly three because they blank. Now um What I've done in the past is different than what you saw there. Basically, instead of having those little images for simultaneous and singles and, and stuff, I had st instead made an animated background. So, in the previous tutorial, I kind of screwed up because I had heavily edited, edited this section in the very first screen pack I made. And I don't ever start with a, a new system definition file. So when I first looked into the file, I was a little bit confused because I didn't know what was supposed to be coming out and what wasn't. And I assumed that that was the way it would be in a unedited Mugen. And so I pretty much made a bad tutorial. So let's, um, let me quickly, let me try and explain what these are. The team menu position is basically where you want it to appear. It was on the left side for P1, and you should always keep it on the left side for player one. I actually want the team um, mode to appear up here for, for player one and over here for player two. So it should be about 20 over maybe 10. It should be, the height should probably be about 250. And um, the background sprite, I believe, would just be, um, you know, if you want to have a gray box or something behind it. I'm not exactly sure. Um, the self-title font is for the, you know, the, the titles of each mode of, team, of the team menu. The self-titled text is team mode. The enemy font should be the same as the, the um, player one font, which is what's referred to as self-title. And it should the enemy title should be the same as well. Now you have the move sound, the done sound, and the value sound. Um, one good way to try and make sure all your sounds are universal is just to edit in the sound file and leave these numbers alone. The menu offset would be where the particular menu, the um, area that would say, I guess, simultaneous and all that stuff, or singles would be. 
Um, and that, and also here's the item spacing, which it's uh, the only important number on here would would be the y axis, just like how it was with uh, making a menu in the title section, because you cannot select horizontally so easily. The team item menu font would be the font for simultaneous and singles and turns. It also has an active font. It has an active two font so it can blink. That's one of the only places that I've seen two active fonts in, in any of Mugen's files. The item cursor offset, which is where the arrow sits, and the cursor animation. I believe that you can also change, switch this for a sprite. Um, the team value icon is the um, icon offset for, this is the icon offset for those images that you saw which represent simultaneous team and turns or tag team and um, this is the icon sprite. I had this commented out and I usually always have it commented out because in the previous screen pack I just used a background sprite for all of it and then in this screen pack I'm not going to have the icons but all this stuff should, should be uh, available. Nothing should be commented out in a unedited mutagen. Now the empty icon is the empty icon offset is for the empty icon sprite. As you can see it's the same as the icon value sprite. I'm not sure why that is. Anyway, the spacing, the value spacing is just the same as how you had the spacing for the font. And you want to do everything you did up here for Team 2. Basically, you just want to copy and paste and then change all the P1 to P2. That's the easiest way to do it. Um, now, for the arrows are these animations. And they're actually transparent. And they're going to be animated so you won't see that little uh, black edge around the sprite. The cursor is where, is for the arrows. This is, well, this is the, the, the actual arrows for the team animation, which are these. This animation up here is for the cursor when you select the character and it goes from normal to lighter to darker and then back to normal to loop. And back to this, this basically is just supposed to make the arrow, uh, I guess it may blink, I'm not exactly sure what it does because I change the numbers actually kind of randomly. But um, it should blend into the background and then maybe get brighter or something. I'm, these are, this is basically the alpha. Okay, now after the animations, you have the background. The background that I have is the, is this, this is the main background. Basically this. The second background is going to be um, the purple lines. The third background is the blackout to create this kind of image. So when you put it all together, it'll look like this. But in Mugen, it actually looks like this and this and this. Um, I'm going to change the alpha so you'll only see the purple lines and not the black background. So, in here, the first background is the big image. 
and it is a normal sprite and it was group one image zero the layer number needs to be zero um purple the purple lines also need to be a sprite normal and the trans is going to be add and in in reality this actually should be alpha but they call it trans the purple add-on is the second one and it's also at in addition the blackout is just sitting here and all these um layer numbers are zero and this uh, act this um animation doesn't really belong so basically that's it except for um the other uh thing you can do is that if you don't want it to be additive you can make it add one which is slightly darker or you can make it sub that's the shorthand I believe I screwed up the other the video that comes after this because I told you to go capital A1 that um, that mistake is due to something that you'll see in the definition files for um, the intro, the game over screen, and the second intro. Those, for some reason, um, have a different requirement. That's why I said that messing with that is slightly more difficult. It's a bit harder than just editing the system definition file. Okay, so, and another thing is that layer number. Um, layer number of zero means it's behind the character. Layer number of one means it's in front of the character. Okay, I think that's the end of this tutorial.